Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and what are ICOs? Recently I came across the term ICO for the first time and quickly found it stood for Initial Coin Offering. These are on the rise because of the success of Bitcoin and its soaring value. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, or cryptocurrency, which is a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange using cryptography to secure the transactions and to control the creation of additional units of the currency. To those of us in many areas of the world simply toiling along and concerned about getting through the day these currencies seem a bit abstract. Simply out of curiosity I asked a commodity broker several weeks ago as to whether he had heard of any of his clients jumping into bitcoins and he said no or not to any great degree. It is important to remember that commodity trading falls into one of the more the high risk endeavors that most prudent investors avoid this in some ways makes it ripe for those wanting to place a bet on a cryptocurrency. His response causes me to question just how widespread the mania over these alternatives to state-issued fiat currencies really is. Regardless of what is happening in America's heartland, it seems interest in this asset class is surging and this is apparent in the mania over initial coin offerings. For years as more and more people have become uncomfortable with holding their wealth in fiat currencies they have bought gold as a safe haven. Cryptocurrencies are seen as an alternative to such things as gold bars and silver coins because of their advantage of being easier to buy and sell. Because of Bitcoin's surging value interest in cryptocurrencies is growing and some investors are being drawn into this new and risky asset class without doing due diligence. This has caused me to wonder how much of this is driven by the fear of being left out of the move rather than faith in these new places to put our wealth. As we hear that even the CME plans to introduce a futures market in such investments, Bloomberg reports that US regulators are growing concerned that mom and pop investors are unwisely jumping into some of these new cryptocurrencies based on celebrity endorsements. This means some speculators may be leaping into cryptocurrencies, sometimes without fully considering the risk. The US Securities and Exchange Commission has even issued a surprising warning, advising that stars often lack sufficient expertise to ensure investments are appropriate. Even worse, pitches could be unlawful if famous backers' compensation isn't disclosed, the agency said. Celebrities who endorse an investment often do not have sufficient expertise to ensure that the investment is appropriate and in compliance with federal securities laws, the SEC said in its statement. The SEC statement went on to say, if you are relying on a particular endorsement or recommendation, learn more regarding the relationship between the promoter and the company and consider whether the recommendation is truly independent or a paid promotion. This represents the agency's latest effort to sound alarms about the white-hot ICO market. In recent months, SEC Chairman Jay Clayton has repeatedly cautioned this space is probably full of fraud. While the SEC didn't name any specific celebrities, some of the stars who have pushed ICOs include Paris Hilton, Floyd Mayweather, and DJ Khaled. Returning to the subject of ICOs, it looks like a new era is coming for ICOs, also known as token sales. China's central bank has announced a ban on ICO funding and an ICO freeze in China because it has seriously disrupted the economic and financial order. This has caused much speculation over whether, and how much, financial regulators will look to regulate the space. The Chinese committee voiced concern that some ICOs are financial scams and pyramid schemes which echoes a recent warning from Singapore's MOS or Central Bank. Brick and mortar financial institutions also claim to be concerned that ICOs are vulnerable to money laundering and terrorist financing risks due to the anonymous nature of the transactions, and the ease with which large sums of monies may be raised in a short period of time. This turns our attention towards the platforms which help connect companies selling tokens or cryptocurrencies with buyers, this is where blockchain comes in. Blockchain is a secure transaction ledger database where applications like Bitcoin run. It is shared by all parties participating in an established, distributed network of computers and records and stores every transaction that occurs in the network. It essentially eliminates the need for trusted third parties such as payment processors. Blockchain proponents often describe the innovation as a transfer of trust in a trustless world, referring to the fact that the entities participating in a transaction may not even know each other yet they exchange value with surety and no third-party validation. This has made blockchain a game-changer. Someday when we look back on this will we be able to see just how big a deal all this really is. Because of the success of Bitcoin and its soaring value, cryptocurrencies are back in the news. 
These digital assets are designed to work as a medium of exchange using cryptography to secure the transactions and to control the creation of additional units of the currency. To those of us in many areas of the world simply toiling along and concerned about getting through the day these currencies seem a bit abstract. Still, these currencies have a solid fan base. With the recent news that Tesla had purchased $1.5 billion in Bitcoin, many of those people that follow Elon Musk have made their first foray into crypto. These new investors come in on the heels of a slew of speculators flush with cash from checks flowing from the government that have already jumped into this market causing it to soar. The question in the minds of serious investors is whether this is a safe place to put your wealth. The main driver of what could be described as a mania is the fear of missing out, and it runs rampant in this market. With wild predictions of Bitcoin surging to six figures or more, many people claim cryptocurrencies are like gold. Many people view it as a way to shelter themselves from the falling value of paper currencies and the dollar in particular. Since the dollar is the reserve currency of the world many Americans that fail to see its major competitors such as the euro and yen are even worse places to store wealth have magnified the possibility of a dollar collapse. A big risk to investors in Bitcoin is that it could be made illegal or the trading of it banned. If this happened in many countries it would drastically damage its appeal. This could be done under the claim that it protects investors from themselves or because it was not sanctioned by those in charge. The greatest reason for this is that it would protect the power of central banks across the globe and their fiat currencies. It is rather silly to think those in control of fiat currencies would surrender their power over the financial system and go gently into the night. On that front, Bloomberg reports that ECB President Christine Lagarde has taken aim at Bitcoin's role in facilitating criminal activity, saying, for those who had assumed that it might turn into a currency, terribly sorry, but this is an asset and it's a highly speculative asset which has conducted some funny business and some interesting and totally reprehensible money laundering activity. Her statement comes as German police took down what they believe was the world's largest illegal darknet marketplace. They shuttered a platform that about half a million people used to trade drugs and cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin. This shines focus on the fact central banks, including the ECB, are increasingly focused on developing their own digital currencies as an official alternative to cash for the digital age. My biggest problem with Bitcoin remains the old, and it's gone, issue. This means the possibility that it could vanish in the blink of an eye. While this can be said of almost any investment, it is particularly true of an intangible asset. Making matters worse, a major problem with an investment like Bitcoin is that when the wheels come off it could happen so quickly that there is almost no time to react. Years ago, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase proclaimed Bitcoin as a fraud, he went on further saying, any trader trading Bitcoin would be fired for being stupid. Last month, during a meeting held for thousands of JP Morgan Chase traders and sales personnel around the world, the question was increasingly being asked by the bank's employees, when will they get involved in Bitcoin? It should be noted that JP Morgan has tried several times in the last few weeks to inject its views and halt Bitcoin's advance without success. JP Morgan is not the only big bank being forced to face up to the new reality of decentralized finance and cryptocurrencies. Recently, Goldman Sachs hosted a private virtual forum with the CEO founder of crypto firm Galaxy Digital. During the event, he expounded on his thesis for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other digital assets as well as their macroeconomic backdrop. The point being, as corporations, payment systems, and disruptors such as Tesla, MicroStrategy, and PayPal, increasingly adopt and accept cryptos, other institutions must adjust. While many people feel that the decision of large banks and institutions to recognize Bitcoin constitutes a major stamp of legitimacy for the nascent asset class. The interpretation that this idealistic technology meant to cut banks and other intermediaries out of the loop and limit their ability to store wealth may only appear to have gone mainstream. It is important to remember, this vessel of value used mostly by rich people so that they can remain rich may have forced groups to accept it but that does not mean they will invest in it. To clarify, if someone sells you their home for a handful of diamonds, they may be doing so only because they know the diamonds can rapidly be offloaded in an active market. This means that just because a bank will now store Bitcoin on behalf of its asset management clients, that does not guarantee Bitcoin's value or force the bank to embrace this asset class. Simply put they are trying to accommodate clients and give the impression they are staying up with current trends. 
Adding to their incentive is the allure that most of the services they offer will carry a fee. Another thing we hear about is mining Bitcoin. This process uses a lot of energy and is becoming increasingly difficult to do. Several YouTube videos on this subject confirm it is difficult to make money doing this. It is a bit ironic that so-called woke companies and sociably responsible people that claim to care about climate change would turn around and buy digital tokens that use more electricity to maintain than some countries. Well, that is all I have to say about that for now. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.